Hello everyone, welcome back to the Sports Vault. Here's your Joe and Big Shot Rob back again, and we just talked on the Brandon Marshall trade. Still wanted to see if there was any news on what it, what the Jets actually traded. There is none. We'll keep you updated though if that changes. But segueing in a little bit, we have to talk about the Derek Jeter story. Big Shot Rob is about as big a baseball fan as there is, so I'm excited to get his take on this and about the Brian Cashman's comments. Should Derek Jeter be the last Yankees captain? And I think it's an interesting question because right now, Rob, there is nobody fitting to be the New York Yankees captain. Oh, definitely not on this roster, Joe. There's not a passion the way you saw with Derek Jeter with how he loved the game, how he would go up to bat, how he would field, how he would lead the team. I don't see that leadership now with the New York Yankees. It's just a bunch of older guys just put together on a team, a bunch of old all-stars put together on a team and they don't have that motive to, like, push each other. I don't see that with this incoming team. And, and it's an interesting team because I think everybody's in such a rush. Like, a couple weeks ago, people were saying, well, who's the captain going to be? Who's the captain going to be? Why do you need to have a captain? I don't, I don't get it. I mean, to me, Rob, captain should be reserved for a transcendent player. And transcendent players don't come around all the time. Mm -hmm. I mean, the Mickey Mantles, the Joe DiMaggio's, the Babe Ruth's, the Lou Gehrig's, the Derek Jeter's. Part of the reason these guys are so special is because they're so rare, because they only come around so often. And I think captain is for that transcendent star. You don't need to have a captain. And I just thought, I never understood that rush from people where you need to have a captain. No. Who says you need to have a captain? Yeah, we. there's no rush. We don't need one right this minute, Joe. I mean, we look at it. Look at what's going to be in the farm system in the next couple of years. See if you get something special out of that. That's what Cashman has to look at. And then maybe you pick a captain, because once you see what's coming through your farm system with the kid who has potential, that's a superstar. Like, I'll go right now. Say we had Mike Trout on our team. That's when you could say right away, oh, he's the next captain for yes. the New York Yankees. Yes. Because that's a kid who plays the game straight. He's something you rarely see in any player, especially him coming up at such a young age. With this Yankees team, though, it's going to take. It's gonna be a couple more years. It's going to be maybe five, six years down the line before you could say the Yankees have a new captain. Does it have to be a homegrown guy? Because I think, for me, that's part of what makes it so special is that guy was born and bred. Like, I love Mike Trout. I wouldn't have a problem if he came to the Yankees and, and he became took on that role. But I think part of it that makes it so special about Jeter is he was homegrown. He was born into it. I mean, he was a Yankee from the system on up never put on another uniform. I think that's part of the thing you say about all these guys. I mean, the Mantles and the DiMaggio's is they only knew one uniform their whole career. And I think it's part of the thing that makes it so special. But let me ask you this. Should there be another captain after Dare Jeter? I mean, we know what it's been, the captain. Can you picture another guy, even if it's a homegrown guy, has Jeter earned the right to kind of die as the captain well not die i mean you know what i mean <laughs> yeah. his legacy be finished as the only captain no i think there should be another captain because you can't say with the yankees down the line that they're not going to have somebody let's coming. hope <laughs> I, I hope they do i mean unless we continue what we do in free agency where we yeah. give away all our draft that's picks. a different story yeah but i mean you can't say down the line if you have a kid who's grown into your system you can't say oh we're not going to choose him as captain when he has that potential he has that bright side coming up He's something special, and I don't see the Yankees saying that. But I do agree with you. I want it homegrown for my system. I want it where he's going to start and finish. We see that all the time with all the athletes. Uh, we want You want a captain who starts and finishes with his team. You don't want a guy who's just coming in when he's like 28, 27 years old. No, I want him from when he's starting at 19, 18 years old until he's 38 years old. That's what I want as my captain, and that's what the Yankees should be doing. And that's the interesting thing about sports today is it just – it used, I think fans used to kind of hold on to that loyalty factor. I, I just don't know if there is that loyalty in, in, in anywhere in sports anymore. I mean, it, especially the thing about in soccer is, I, I'm sorry I've got to talk about soccer, Rob. It's like, <laughs> there is no loyalty. It's just like guys just jumping from place to place. And it's so rare that you'll find a guy who spent his entire career there. And I think we see it a lot. In all sports now, where it's very rare where a guy spends his whole career in that one uniform. And I think that's part of the thing that makes that title of captain so important. Because for a fan to kind of go out there and anoint you as the captain, for the players as well. But I think it probably means a little bit more to the fans because they're so emotionally invested. 
that captain title means loyalty. It means that you showed through and through that you stuck it out through tough, through the tough times, through the good times. You were always there. I don't know. That's just my philosophy on it. Yeah, it's sad to see, Joe, in sports. You know, we talk about players not really staying. What has it become the league? It's all about money now. It's not about, oh, I'm going to stay on my team. You know, you could grow up a kid. Oh, this guy's my favorite athlete. 28 years old. He's getting a contract. Oh, we're offering him 180. This other team is offering him 240 million. And that's one thing that's been sad to see in the, the sports over the last couple of years. You don't have guys staying the way they used to with that team, winning the championship, staying for that long time. And that's like the sad thing when it comes to a captain. Because if you want a guy staying a long time, that barely happens anymore because somebody's always leaving. And that's the thing I like about like the reunions. In the, in the NBA, we see it so much. Like I like I was critical of Kobe when he signed the deal just because we knew the Lakers were going to be bad. And if he took a lesser deal, which he probably should have, they might have been able to compete a little bit more and bring in some better players. But the thing you like about Kobe is he's going to finish his career in one uniform, and he's been in that uniform his whole time. Now, we have some other really good players who've been who jumped ship at the end of their career, and I just I don't like ending it like that. I mean, and I give I like like the Kevin Garnett's going back to where things yeah. started, LeBron going back to Cleveland. He will most likely finish his career there. It's just fitting to kind of say and, and just know one thing your whole career. And I I don't know. I mean, I think as we progress now, we're not going to see another Kobe or another Tim Duncan. I think Tim Duncan might be the last uh, breed of that type of star. Maybe not just in the NBA, but of it, but in all sports. Oh, definitely, Joe. He, you're never going to see a power forward like the way Tim Duncan was. The way what the guy did, the way he sticked it out from '99 when he first came up with the Spurs till now in his career. Guy has been phenomenal. Just really cares about this team. Will do anything to do do anything to win. We look at his salary, Joe. Tim Duncan really doesn't make that much. He cuts out salary. So Popovich could put a team together for him and really sticks it out and has been the face of that San Antonio Spurs franchise. It's been amazing how he worked with David Robinson, Tony Parker, Bruce Bowen. The guy has been phenomenal. And just seeing him at it where he is at this point in his career coming to the close, you're never going to see an athlete like that, a guy who truly loved the game and respected it the way he did. And I'm with you. I mean, and we kind of, when you look at that in general, even in, in the NFL, we saw yesterday Peyton Manning taking the $4 million pay cut. Tom Brady has done it many times, and I you've got to love stuff like that. I mean, I think it gets ugly in sports a lot of times towards the end of guys' careers because sometimes guys kind of aren't willing to accept that. I mean, a lot of times I think you look at guys and they want to be paid based on what they've done, and some guys just can't accept that they're just not as good as they once were. They're out of their prime. Kobe kind of with his deal, but we do see, I mean, like Peyton taking that $4 million pay cut. It's time to accept reality. You're not the same player anymore, and it's going to help the team out big time. And I think it's always cool when you can see that. And Jeter kind of fall, fell into that category as well towards the end. Uh, but it's very interesting, this captain thing, um, because it's something that's very close to a lot of people's heart because the Yankees are right now are kind of in limbo. I don't know what to make of it. I don't think they're going to be good for four to five years is, is what I'm bracing for. Mm -hmm. I think that they're going to go through a stretch of four to five years before they are back to being truly relevant again. And it all starts from developing that next homegrown captain because right now free agency is not where they've got to go. And, and the thing about free agency, Rob, is you can speak on this is a lot of people look at, well, the Yankees had a lot of success with free agency, but when you look at it, the core of their roster was young, developed talent from their own farm system, and they filled out the holes with free agents. But right now, they've got to get back to developing. I think that's the fastest way, and it's still going to take some time. Yeah, look at, look at it now, Joe, with this Yankees roster. It's not even homegrown. Everybody's a free agent that came into this, and it's Sad to see because with this team, look how much is spent into it. Second highest payroll coming into this season. And this team can't even hit for a great batting average. Nobody on that team can hit over 300. I mean, it's going to be a real struggle. Brian McCann lost his bat. Jacoby yeah. Ellsbury really dropped down in numbers last year. Brett Gardner, who is homegrown with the Yankees, is up there now in age. He's 32 years old. Carlos Beltran, you can only hope he stays healthy after signing that three-year, $45 million deal last year. 
A Rod's back, but l- don't get me started about A Rod. Oh God, yeah. Uh, let's let's <laughs> let's save that for another day. But now it's it comes to the point now where stop spending the money. It, the Yankees have to learn that the farm system is the most important thing. Because look at the New York Mets. Look at the situation they're in. The Mets they've had their bad break since '07 when they went down late in September and didn't make the playoffs. But look at them now. They have the pitching staff, and what is that from? They traded guys around. They built the farm system up over the draft the last couple of years, and the Yankees need to start visualizing. We need to look for the future, and that's the future. The farm system is the future. I'm with you. It's hard for an organization like the Yankees to accept that, but it's the truth. You're not in a position to compete, and I, I don't like when teams are unwilling to accept that. Look at what, what the mess that the Philadelphia Phillies are right now. They fell into that trap where they were unwilling to accept that they couldn't compete. They went out there and signed guys like Marlon Bird and and um and Roy, and what's it, and what's AJ Burnett and guys like that. And they were in no position to compete. And now look at the position there. And they you don't even know what they're gonna do this year. You can't even project what they're gonna be because of how bad you think. And it's difficult. I mean, but you've got to accept reality. It's not gonna be pretty. But you got to stay firm. You've got to commit. Put it all in. And let me ask you, have you watched much preseason baseball yet? This is just kind of off topic for a minute, though, but can you actually watch preseason baseball? Not really. I, I can't either. It, it's not exciting because it's the guys terrible. only play a couple innings, three it's to terrible. four innings, and then it's I like, mean, oh. I got excited yesterday when I saw little highlights of Clayton Kershaw, but, I mean, for the most part, I mean, I just look. I can't watch preseason baseball. Just can't do it. <laughs> Cannot do it. But that is going to wrap it up for this segment. Very good thoughts from Big Shot Rob and Jersey Joe. We will be back later in the day, so thank you for watching and stay tuned.